loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel and Bahati Life podcast. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator behind Bahati Life Apothecary and a professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thanks for hanging out with me once again if you're an old friend and family to Bahati Life and the Bahati Vibe tribe. And if you're brand new, welcome. So we are going to be talking about this week ahead. And I'm not going to lie to you. I found myself looking for problems so that I could find the solution as I pulled this chart. And then I started thinking, do I have some sort of astrological PTSD? Because the transits lately for a, a while now have been so intense, have been so aggressive and so wired for transformation that I almost expect the worst lately. And I don't know about you guys, but I really don't like surprises, even pleasant surprises. I'm not a fan of surprises. I don't like being surprised. I, yeah, everybody in my personal life knows that. Even when they give me a gift, it comes from a good place, but they'll be like, you know, just I got you something and I'll be like, like, what is it? <laughs> like, I'm excited, but I don't like surprises. Let me know so I can plan ahead for whatever it is. And I know, I know it's a thought that counts, but what, what am I working with here? Like, what is it? I don't know, guys. So let me know if, that is, if that's something that you can relate to. But astrologically speaking, I don't like surprises at all. I like to be prepped and planned and prepared for whatever it is that is coming my way. I don't know if it's life experience or the fact that I'm a Virgo and we just like to plan for the inevitable and plan for any type of deviations. I want to have a plan for the plan. But, um, and I'm assuming that's why you guys, you know, hang out with me so much because I love to keep you informed, almost too informed, not only with my astrological predictions, but also intuitively, like, what is the vibe? What can we expect? I don't like to be, uh, thrown for a loop in any way, shape or form. So having said that, bringing it back to square one, cause I'm already getting triggered <laughs> talking about the surprises. As I was looking at this chart, I was just like on edge, kind of like a street cat waiting for something to like <clears throat> go left real quick. And I was ready to write it down and start piecing together a solution, not only for you guys, but also for me, because I'm under the same energies as you. However, I don't feel like there's going to be a lot of crazy changes this week. Let's just all give one big collective sigh of relief. This doesn't feel like something that's un unexpected. It, I don't get the element of surprise. There is a small percentage for surprise here as we can always expect that with Uranus. Remember last week I was kind of telling you guys that with the earth um, and the full moon, I could definitely see some earthquakes that could occur, uh, volcanoes and uh, like uh, surprises when it comes to the earth, uh, massive changes that could predict or um, trigger random occurrences all over the earth when it comes to you know natural natural disasters and at the full moon we had a bunch of earthquakes that were life-shattering for many many people a lot of people's lives changed overnight in an instant and um so let's go ahead and keep them in their prayers but these are things that i love astrology for because we can see it coming before it happens and we don't know entirely where it is specifically that it will strike unless we're pulling like an astro cartography chart and you can see the energy of the area that you are currently in what is it you can expect in that area but for the most part we just know that this is the influence on our earth and this is ultimately kind of what is that we're going to see, but maybe the, the specific details are, you know, uh, something that we would have to look and dig a little deeper. Uh, so I do see the lingering effect of the full moon that's already happened. And I think that maybe that's why I'm on high alert right now. But looking at the entirety of this week, it actually feels like it's going to be a relatively pleasant week for the majority of us. If there is a surprise that comes through, I think that it has to do with a financial, from a financial perspective or an invitation of some sort that feels very positive and exciting and not as intense as it could be. This is because Venus, who's currently transiting through Pisces, is living her best life. She is exalted in the sign of Venus, which means that she can do no wrong. She feels the best that she will ever feel. And because she's in her element, because she's in her zone, she will not have you feeling incomplete, invalid. In fact, your your own 
self-worth and self-value might have uh, hit a few high notes within the last few days. You might feel very vibrant. You might feel attractive. You might feel magnetic. You might even be working magic if you're a magical practitioner, practitioner like me for glamour magic, for feminine energy, for receptivity type of um, attraction type of spells or intention settings or prayers, whatever it is, you might be very feeling um, in tune or wired into feminine, the feminine form and beauty and aesthetic and those types of things. Some of you guys might have actually made major purchases when it comes to beauty and value or maybe even gemstones, diamonds, those types of things. I can see that within the chart as well. But all of this feels really good. It feels relatively good. Some of you guys might actually be getting a job opportunity or a raise or some type of promotion that you are then going to immediately treat yourself right after. You know that you've secured the bag. So for that reason, you celebrate the journey, you celebrate the, you, you're celebrating the path and you're treating yourself to something really nice. And for the rest of you guys that haven't, I highly encourage you to do that if you can. Everybody, this is going to be different depending on your spending, depending on what is important to you and how you spend your resources. But for the most part this week, everything feels really good to help you to feel very good. Even Venus square Mars transit that's happening here within the charts, it doesn't feel like it's punishing in any way, shape or form. It actually feels like a little bit of Edge is good for some chemistry and some connection and some, ooh, like I feel something here versus, oh yeah, like I know I've secured that. So it is what it is. There is some type of edge here, especially as Mars is transiting through the sign of Gemini and just feels, I don't want to say irritability could be something here, of course, but I, I don't necessarily see it as that. I feel like Mars is feeling very supportive. It almost feels like Mars is feeling very jumpy and quick to say yes to things. And I feel that if you use this transit and if you use these energies wisely, you can get a lot of people on your side. You can find yourself um, linking up with like-minded souls and spirits. You can find yourself just vibing with other people. In general, again, I get this sense of satisfaction from life as a whole, even if you're someone who would normally might be stressed out by certain things or things might not have been going your way, it does feel like this week you're going to have a little bit of a break and some fresh air. I do wanna say that at the start of this week, with the fact that the moon is directly opposing Saturn, this is gonna be temporary just on Monday and fall flowing into Tuesday because sometimes emotions kind of linger. I do get a strong sense that there might be a feeling of emotional, like, I don't want to say emotional responsibility, but a feeling of things that you might be already holding on to your chest, like holding into your heart and holding on to your energy, your aura. Those are things that you will feel. It might be something that lingers in the back of your mind, something you might even be, find yourself talking with a friend about something that has been a little bit of a disappointment or a failure to you, something that you wish could have worked out and you don't have the best feelings towards it, but you haven't given, given up on hope on that. I can see that this type of heavy heaviness or heartache or disappointment is something that can be calmed down a little bit, cooled down if you can connect with a friend over coffee and actually factor in more time to connect with your friends, your family. This would be a great week for that. Regardless of, let's say if you're separating from your family lately because these transits have pushed you into a space where you are not self-isolated but you've been disconnected from your normal groups, you might benefit this week from revisiting those groups or connecting with them, talking with them, having a good conversation. It actually feels that if you normally have disconnected that the reconnection this week actually will feel good and supportive and genuine. And even if it doesn't, it's not going to make you feel like when you walk away from it, like, damn, I shouldn't have done that. It actually feels like you're like, oh, so this is why we don't hang out. This is why we don't connect. There's this really nice, healthy space and distance that makes you feel emotionally supported, energetically supported this week. And I love that for every single one of us because I feel like that's something that's been neglected lately. The other transit that is that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that uh, Mars, I'm sorry, not Mars, Mercury transiting through Capricorn is going to be directly on top of Pluto. Pluto is being positively aspected by Neptune. Neptune has been transiting through the sign of Pisces. It's 
Um, also, Neptune is squaring off with a part of Fortune. Part of Fortune is sitting in the sign of Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter. I And Jupiter is falling in the sign of Aries. Having all of that, saying all of that, I want to say that I do get this really strong sense of business venture. I do get a strong sense of self-starting and initiating. Some of you guys are separating from friends in order to start a, a, a business venture or to travel or to go somewhere. I don't know how this is going to personally influence you because again, this is the chart for the moment that is just all the collective consciousness. So for you specifically, it's gonna be different, but there's something about separating from your friends or from the, from the home environment or from closeness and intimacy that feels really supportive of you right now. Some of you guys, it's almost like you're starting a new job and that means that you're not gonna be able to do like Taco Tuesdays with your friends, random example, every Tuesday because those are the hours that is that you're working, but there, it feels like it's supportive of you. This venture feels supportive of you. I'm also getting a strong sense with the fact that Mercury is gonna be directly conjunct Pluto. Anytime when these two planets directly connect with each other in any way, shape, or form, there is a doorway that opens up for largely transformative conversations, conversations that can totally change dynamics in relationships, um, themes in your life. I could create a, a, a huge solution to a problem that is that you've been trying so hard to figure out. It could bring in news big time that could financially change the game for you as you know it. Everyone, this is going to be different, but it's going to be felt in a very strong, obvious way. This is not something that we are, you're going to be able to avoid or escape. This is going to be direct February 10th, roughly around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time during the day. But of course, we're going to be feeling this all this week. For some of you guys, if you have to book a job interview or if you're looking for new jobs or new opportunities or you're trying to land some type of contractual agreement or something that you want to just really nail, like you just really want to secure the bag, anything around the Feb February 10th is going to be absolutely beneficial because anything that you say has a lasting impact. There's something about your words, the power of your words that is trans it, it transforms the mind of other people. It, it's either really convincing or you just know how to wield your power. You know the right thing to say at the right time in the right way. These are things that it is that I, I really support for you, especially now as the sun is transiting through the sign of Aquarius. It really supports you in branching outside of your normal comfort zones, kind of doing things a different way, applying a different approach to something in order to get and gain something that you haven't yet secured for yourself. All in all, again, this week feels incredibly supportive, incredibly supportive. I also feel like with the North Node transiting through the sign of Taurus, directly opposing the vertex that's falling in the sign of Scorpio, I feel like for many of you guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting this like slingshot type of energy, I just feel like this launching that happens this week, it feels like a faded launching, launching into the direction that you are meant to go. So what is Taurus ruling within your chart, within your natal chart? Some of you guys will say to me immediately, Jess, I don't have Taurus in my chart. You may not necessarily have planets that fall in the sign of Taurus, but that doesn't mean that Taurus doesn't rule an aspect in your chart. Taurus does rule a house within your chart. You just have to kind of do some digging and know exactly what to, uh, that you need to look for. The chart that I'm looking at at the moment is called a chart of the moment. So it's the time that is that I pull the astrological chart. It shows me the energy of this week and what house, where house is certain uh, can fall. And this is something that I love to use for horror chart, which is pretty much the um, the chart for pulling explanations for like where things are and to help you to see how things are going to pan out based upon how the energy currently falls by the moment, the exact moment that it is that you pull the chart. And as I'm looking at the chart at the moment, of course, we have North Node and Uranus transiting through the sign of Taurus. But let's say we pulled those planets out. Taurus itself is actually ruling the 12th house for the chart of the moment. This does not apply to you. It's just an example so that you guys can understand what it is that I'm talking about here. Even if there were no planets that fell in the sign of Taurus, Taurus it in, 
itself is ruling the element, the energy of the 12th house, which represents our psychology. It represents secret, the subconscious mind, the unknown, the hidden, hospitals, institutions, those types of things. So it these areas, like if I was pulling up the chart for someone in order to see like, you know, is there secrets secrets within this relationship or what can we expect from this job opportunity? I would see that there's, I would see and I would say that even though there's no planets that would maybe fall within the sign of Taurus, that there would be, Taurus would still have an impact essentially. Like I can go on and on about astrology forever. So I'm just trying not to do that. Also, I've had two cups of coffee with my friend before I met up with you guys now, talking with you here now. So your girl's a little caffeinated, not gonna lie to you. But um, I'm just letting you guys know that this is what I can see. But again, for the most part, this really does look like a phenomenal week. If I were you, I would use this week to manifest abundance, to manifest beauty, and to work with the element of magnetism and attraction. This is regardless of your ethnic, racial, sexual identity, anything. Some of you guys would be like, well, I'm a man, so I can't do this, or I'm a woman and I can't do this nothing is off limits to you and if you know how to work with both your masculine and feminine sides then you're going to be doing really really well on this earth believe me um so just go ahead and and tap and lean into your magnetism things just kind of like naturally drawing to you things that are attracted to you also work on your own energy work on your own aura work on your own vibration this is not something that you tell yourself but what is it that you find who and what do you find yourself drawing to you? Be really honest with yourself, especially, especially as Mercury is transiting through the sign of Pluto. This is, this could be very self-transformative. This could be a, a mindset that you have been very stubborn with and unmoving with, but finally you can see the light, at, at least with this week. So if you say that you're a person of high vibration and yet you find yourself with really negative experiences or attracting people who have really tumultuous type of chaotic energies or just bad vibes in general. There was something about you that said yes to this. There was something within your soul and your spirit that was like, yes, this works. If not, they wouldn't be there. So how long do you linger in those energies? What type of diet and foods? What Are you going for walks? What type of music are you listening to? What are you telling yourself? What do you believe about yourself? Are you forceful? In the spiritual community, and I, I do wanna do a video about masculine versus feminine energies, but in the spiritual communities, I'm definitely seeing this for masculine energy, AKA male, like very masculine presenting people or masculine energies as, as in general. They will say that they are positive energies. They'll say that they they attract positive experiences, but and they could be very spiritually inclined, but there's something about them that is not receptive at all. So they find themselves in some crazy ass energies. I mean, I, I see it in the emails. I don't look at my emails personally, but my assistant does, and she lets me know what's going on over there. Um, and it's it's sometimes it's insane. And from maybe lack of a better word, I shouldn't use the word insane, but it's very. That's, if there's one word that I could use without getting dragged on the internet, it's gonna be that. It's, it's, it's not healthy, it's not balanced. And the reason why is because that energy is not balanced. So this is a great time to self-reflect on your own balance. Are you just as receptive as you are aggressively seeking and aggressively manifesting the things that is that you want? And if not, where can you open up to that, to balancing those energies out so that it's not so tumultuous all the time, okay? Keep in mind that last, just yesterday, we had the full moon in the sign of Leo, which was absolutely, absolutely stunning. Um, but not only was the full moon in the sign of Leo, which activates creation and self-worth and masculine energy and heart-centered uh, vibrations, which I love, but the sun is exiting out of a really tight square that was with Uranus. So this, even though this aspect is no longer exact and the sun is consistently moving away from the energy of Taurus, I'm sorry, the energy of Uranus transiting Taurus, you still can vibe with these energies and, and open up to the element of doing different, again, in order to receive something that it is that you haven't received yet. Now, later on, next week and later on down the line, you're going to see um, roughly around February 16th, you're gonna see the sun directly conjunct Saturn. And this is where you can implement this, the um, 
revelations and the ideas and the good energies that you've started to build upon right now, next week you'll be able to cement them, ground them, stabilize them, and that could be your new reality. But let's shift into that energy. Let's move into that energy because it's definitely a beautiful vibe if you're open to it. And if not, I don't know what to tell you, honey, because some of you guys choose to walk in the gutter. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Please do not be offended, but I'm literally, I'm just going to keep it real. There are people who actively choose to partake in very malicious, devilish, um, evil vibes, and I don't know why. But then they portray as, like, more positive, you know, love and light type of energies. But the intention behind it is just not coming from a pure place. On top of that, there's like a lot of like insecurity and stuff like that and self-doubt, which I understand, but let's just, let's just change the energy. Let's change the vibe. I'm seeing it a, not, maybe not seeing it a lot, but it's something that I'm seeing within the chart and I'm hearing about it in, in the emails that are coming through and people, what, the, how people are uh, saying things kind of says a lot about the mentality. And also I understand because looking at the chart, there's this spiritual influence and, and energetic vulnerability that I just I'm, I'm aware of and I want you guys to not fall victim to it and to not have it prey on you and eat off of you because that's that's what I'm seeing it's almost like a little leech okay we're just gonna pull that fucking leech off and set it on fire because it has no place it serves no place and this is the week I think in order to change things up and do things different okay guys thank you so much for hanging out with me once again I'm going to cut this off now because I've said enough. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. You can email me at info at Bahati Life. And of course, this video is sponsored by Queen Bee Homestead and BahatiLife.com, the apothecary where I'm working my magic. Queen Bee Homestead is where I'm working my body butters and um, chicken coop herbs. <laughs> yeah, interesting combination, but it works for me. So you can find me at Queen Bee Homestead Co. And you can also find me at BahatiLife.com. Uh, work my magic in all the different many different ways until then I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and subscribe to this podcast because there's plenty more videos and podcasts where this came from and of course I'll see you in my next one bye you were created to live a life of magic abundance love and blessing all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing the Hottie Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahatiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahatiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.